Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hello, Wrestling Mayhem Show fans. This is Wrestling Mayhem Show episode 515. I am not Mike Sorg at Sorgator on Twitter, uh, but we're going to go into that eventually for reasons. You may know my voice, though. My name is Eamon Payton at Eamon 2 please on the Twitter. The dulcet uh, tones of Eamon Payton. The do- oh, this is going to be a fun journey, ain't it? <laughs> this is going to be surely something. Um, but yeah, uh, Sorgatron couldn't be here. Uh, uh, the, 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 the wrath of the, the podcasting gods have prevented uh, Sorgatron Media Studios from getting off the ground this evening. So you know what? We're winging it. We're going it. Uh, going it. Uh, going it? Going rogue. Is going the, it? We're going it. We're going it rogue. Uh, that's how the phrase is, What if we is, all right? had, like, tearaway suits like Cesaro and sunglasses? That would then we would have zero viewers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, we're not we're not on today. We we're we're not live today. I mean, we can do that right now, mm-hmm. and, and you know, the audio listeners would be out of luck. But I would tear my shirt, but it's a Nakamura shirt, and I don't want to tear. It. Speaking of audio listeners, audio listeners, that voice that you heard just then it was from uh, uh, Bobby F J Town. Bobby, how are you? This good. I am great. Thing. I am in my newly revamped uh, studio section. Uh, I changed everything around. Everything's wrestling related now in my area. I have my most redneck prize possession that I have, the Stone Cold Steve Austin cookie jar. Um, yeah, so I'm doing good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. It, actually, I'm dying inside because I'm so nervous. <laughs> it's fine, Eamon. But also joining us uh, to, to reassure me and get me through this is uh, Riz from Riz Play Games. Here, Sorg. Glad to be here. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm growing out my sword here. Uh, I hope to eventually get to sword level. Actually, actually, if you put your goatee up to where your head is, and then like let that grow out even more, then you can be sword from like 2006. Oh, but that's when you still have the ponytail. Yes. So, uh, Amen. How many how many weeks have I been sitting here telling you to get a man bun? I maybe, I'm trying as hard as I can. Exactly. Maybe Brutus the Barber Beefcake stole his ponytail. Oh, don't bring up Brutus Beefcake because <laughs> I, I, I just realized he has nipple rings. Yeah. You just realized this? Yes, because I'm not looking at his nipples. <laughs> Continue. Continue. Speaking of Brutus the Barber Beefcake, this is the show where we talk about all things uh, professional wrestling uh, every week. I want to give a big thanks. I, Let's do this. Fine. I want to give a big thanks uh, to, to Basic Sickness for the intro and outro music mm-hmm. uh, every week on Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, go support them at basicsickness.com. Uh, if you want to support us, you want to check out everything that we're doing from our shows that we do for everything in professional wrestling to the articles uh, that uh, Matt Carlin's and various others post, go to wrestlingmayhemshow.com, uh, uh, live at wrestlingmayhemshow.com most every Tuesday. Uh, we're not live streaming there tonight for reasons, but we went into that. Um, Same uh, as well. If you want to, let us know what you think about this show. Let us know what you think about professional wrestling. Uh, you can email us at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can also call our hotline at 412-206-WMS0. No. 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 That? No. No. Uh, no, tw- no, 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 that works. Uh, Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, go to Facebook. Uh, follow us on our Facebook group, uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. We're posting good times stuff. on the Facebook group. Good times. It is uh, good times on the uh, Yeah, and, and that's where we post a lot of wrestling related stuff and things. Uh, if you want to listen to this podcast, you can subscribe. Yes. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. Um, uh, like I said, every Tuesday, also at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, and uh, you could also. If you enjoy what we're doing, and, and <laughs> this shit show that this show has already become... Uh, We've already lost all of our endorsements. Uh, you can nice. support us on Patreon. There are plenty of very helpful, generous people that have supported us mm-hmm. on Patreon. Uh, our good friend Ed Burke 
Uh, we want to thank, we also want to thank Tony Garza at The Wrestling Revolution, uh, uh, the, math, uh, blah, 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 the Matthew Carlins and Jennifer Carlins uh, Foundation for Podcast Betterment, and also Bo Diggity. Woo! That was horrible. You didn't do the woo! You didn't do the woo! I didn't do the woo! I did, you I did, the do the woo. Woo. I did Bobby did it. I didn't do it because I was you, thinking it. You, you wake everybody up in that dorm right now and you woo like a man. No, I'm not doing that. I'm hosting this show. Oh, I like Dr. Phil, a.k.a. Sorry, Marty the Moth. Yeah, don't woo like Dr. Phil. <laughs> um, Jesus. Uh, yeah, and that's our intro for this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, go <laughs> God. let's go into the topics this week. Let's, let's talk mm-hmm. about things in professional wrestling. Does that sound good, guys? That, that sounds, sounds amazing. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I guess the one thing, we talked a lot about Raw and the Raw wrap-up show, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty decent Raw, as we mentioned before, obviously, with uh, Shane McMahon. Now I'm just having Raw again. We're cool yeah, with that. Know, you know, that. That is actually pretty good. Um, it, it's a pretty good intro uh, to what we're going to discuss. But I want to say the whole, what's the point of having the match now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like that that's a thing. Somebody sent you don't like that people are saying that. Yeah, yes, I don't like that people message. are saying that because. Oh, go ahead, Bobby. Somebody sent me a message on Twitter last night saying, "Yeah, but Shane McMahon, the whole match with the Undertaker didn't matter." And I tweeted back at him, "Yeah, but look how Raw has improved the last two weeks. It's it, been amazing." And he's like, "You have a point." Touché. It matters. <laughs> it, it the match itself didn't matter. Yeah. The reaction to Shane McMahon. First of all, coming back, mm-hmm. I think, mattered even more than the match itself. And then, yeah, you had the high spot falling from like all the way up to the freaking roof down to the ground. But you also had that reaction that everybody loves Shane McMahon. Mm-hmm. And what were they going to do? They were going to change it so Shane McMahon wins? Well, I I think another reason why people were kind of asking as to what you know what was the point of the whole Mania match was also uh, again these are only rumors but they are being you know kind of reported that going around Taker was saying that that was his last Mania match, hmm. which I find very interesting why they would book that stipulation have Taker win so he could still do Mania but that still be his last Mania match and then just give Shane the stipulation. But hey, yeah. uh, wrestling's weird. Whatever. We're, 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 we're trying to put logic into illogical things sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Our, Wait, all we a, always. a dead man fought the owner's son, and we're trying to put logic to it. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. And then, and then the owner was like, I love you again, son, pretty yeah. much. I mean, um, they, my first, respect. first they de- disowned the sun, and then yeah. the sun came back, and everything's all hunky-dory now. Linda McMahon at one time was almost comatose. <laughs> almost. In a wheelchair. Yes. God. Um, but no, that's actually... We, we want to talk about something else that happened on Raw. Something that really, I mean, I, I think... I mean, obviously people were talking about, but it was amazing how this was kind of like even not the best thing on this Raw, but... Yeah, Kelly came back. Yes. Exactly. Uh, no, uh, uh, at least two, what, tenths, I guess, or whatever, of the Bullet Club's on Raw now. Well, three, three tenths. Three tenths. Well, technically, well... Well, you know what, no, no, you're right, you're right. They did kick AJ Styles out yeah. of the Bullet Club the last time they were in the ring together. Your Bullet so Club you're for life, unless you're AJ Styles. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, uh, debuting, and I guess... It's re- good Biscuits and gravy. Jesse looks different. Um, looks really different. Uh, coming out on Raw and just them just being them. Uh, as much as, I, I mean, obviously we saw it with AJ Styles at the Rumble, but I feel like this is one of the rare times where you see some guys just come in and debut as, you know, guys from another federation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and they, they put them over, too. They were talking about yes. how, like, these guys were something, you know, and, and not just their previous gimmicks in WWE, even though Machine <laughs> Machine Gun hasn't been there before. But um yeah, like they didn't they didn't call him Luke Gallows, they called him Doc Gallows, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. 
So I, 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 I do I do implore uh, uh, Mr. Doc to change his Twitter handle though because it's still Impact Doc. <laughs> yeah. I think oh. that's going to be his gimmick from now on. He's just going to go, um, you can follow me on Impact Doc. That's yeah. It. That's it. But hey. Um, no, but look, at, it's it's very interesting because obviously WWE uh, now has kind of created this system called NXT where they kind of feed people in like a, you know, your Samoa Joes, your Austin Aries, your Shinsuke Nakamura's to kind of almost, not obviously if they know their reputation, but obviously to give them a path to sort of introduce them slowly to a WWE audience. And I think they learned their lesson from Tensai. Yes. How, how, the, how, how That's how not to do it, not to reintroduce a character. Yeah. The, well, you know, Tensai was just wrong on all accounts. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now, now, now they're, they're putting people from, like, Japan out front. They're not, like, giving them terrible gimmicks like they would have in the past. Hmm. And I think, like you said, the NXT influence has something to do with that because um, whether it be Vince or Triple H, they're finally seeing that there's money in these people and that they can make money in these people. Mm -hmm. Not the gimmick, the person. And yeah. you're seeing and you're seeing that even in stuff that's not the Bullet Club related, like, mm -hmm. the, like the Cruiserweight Challenge. Yeah. You have yep. guys that aren't even known in WWE or by WWE fans to be in this. I mean, go, go up to a kid or or a WWE only watching fan and ask them who. Uh, uh, who give, give me a, a, a give me a name. Zack Saber Jr. Yeah. He, yes. Tell just ask somebody who Zack Saber Jr. is. People there aren't going to know who Zack Saber Jr. is. Mm -hmm. They're gonna think he's awesome because the name sounds pretty cool, but it, it's they're gonna be like, I don't know who that is, or show we them a picture know. of to to uh, to Tazawa. Yeah, yeah, look here, Tazawa. Yeah, show them a picture of Tazawa. They they'll think of something probably a lot weird. Um, but I was gonna say probably be yeah, pretty racist. racist. Yeah, <laughs> um, but but like Lord Tensa. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but but with this cruiserweight tournament, they're putting stuff. They're gonna put stuff on the network. You know they're gonna put stuff mm -hmm. on the network, mm -hmm. and they're gonna have the qualifiers on the network. They're gonna have a, this whole bunch of stuff on the network, and it's gonna be an introduction to them on indie wrestling, and on professional wrestling itself, because that's where people come from now. That that's that's where they have to showcase where people come from, because they they know that they're out there. I hope they don't do it like they did with the Dusty Tag Team uh, tournament and just show like little bits and pieces of matches. I want whole matches so we can introduce who these guys are. Well, I, I think we will get that because we're getting actual series. Like yes. it's, not, it's not just you know kind of parts of a regular wrestling show. Yeah. yeah. So, I, so I think it'll be good. Here's an interesting question to pose. Uh, uh, so we have talents, obviously, from other companies really emerging and coming into WWE in various forms. Do you think that do you think there's a, a system or, or some criteria I guess that's coming into play when it comes to the reason why guys like AJ Styles or, or Gallows and, and, and um, Anderson make it up immediately to the main roster while guys like Samoa Joe and Austin Aries and Nakamura are being put into NXT? Mm -hmm. AJ Styles because AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, they all know the business. Mm -hmm. Because AJ Styles was in TNA. AJ Styles created TNA. Mm -hmm. and helped I filled TNA. People know who AJ Styles is. I was actually thinking about this today, um, as far as like Samoa Joe goes. Mm -hmm. I think he... Him being... He was pretty much the first person that jumped from TNA to WWE. Like, he's the first one that made it through that barrier. Yeah. Was, it, so, was that before? So, was that before James Storm? Yeah, it was before James yeah, Storm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they so they kind of put him in NXT because they didn't they weren't sure what to do with him, you know. And now that they got AJ Styles and they got uh, Nakamura and all these other ones and 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 uh, you know, the, now Joe's kind of stuck down in NXT, and I hope they bring him to the main roster. Mm. But I think he's, He's kind of in limbo right now because he, he, you know, he came early. Well, also, also, how much do you think it also plays in the fact of 
we you know we hit, we see Triple H say all the time the how the whole idea of NXT is now not just developmental; it's a brand. Yeah, it's its own yeah. brand of wrestling. So, and, and I, I I found it interesting when we had um, uh, Krista Joseph on a few months ago, and he talked about sort of how the is kind of trying to poach some of these talents from independents mm-hmm. and, and and other yeah, companies. Yeah, and and how they now have created a an, an entity like NXT. Or if they don't really need them on the main roster or don't have a place for them, they can just put them there. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's where Samoa Joe is right now. Like, I, I don't want to say he's he's going to the main roster. I'm, I'm, I, I hope he does. Mm. But I think he's perfect where he is in NXT. He's perfect at enhancing some talent. Mm-hmm. Like, kicking their butts as well. Yeah. Kicking their ass. Um, but... but I, I think I heard somewhere that there was a rumor that he wasn't supposed to be going up at all. Yeah. I don't I don't know how true that is. Then again, I think it's interesting. Was yeah. When it first came up. And but I do I do see a a, a way that they can do that. Mm-hmm. But I don't like say he comes up. Then what? Are you gonna Are you gonna shove? Because somebody's gonna have to go down a tier. Because you can't have AJ Styles. Well, you can have it, but you can't have all these guys bundled up and then, with the, with that three hour show, have them all in one area. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of a double edged sword, apparently. But it's a good thing to have. It's a it's a mm-hmm. great thing to have to it's have a good problem to have to have Nakamura yeah. and Samoa Joe and Aries. On the lower end of the spectrum, and maybe Joe doesn't want to go up yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at Finn Balor; he doesn't want to go up yet. Well, Finn is scared that he's gonna, you know, yeah, be in the same place as Tyler Breeze. Which, but, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, Mr. Owen eighty um, nine. Yeah, oh, I feel so bad for Tyler. But uh, I, I think um, there is, I think, a wealth of talent right now in the WWE in general. There is in. We've said it many times before. There is more talent right now that that there's ever been, and I'm not just talking talented people. I'm talking numbers wise as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's interesting the fact that there is kind of a lot of congestion. There, there's a chance of a lot of congestion when it comes to what the roster's like. I mean, how hell, hell the Vaude villains got called up, but we haven't seen them on Raw once. I thought they were never gonna get called up. I thought they were gonna be in NXT forever. And it's mm-hmm. it's kind of strange because the way I think they're I I, ho- I hate to say this but I think they're gonna be the new ex- ascension. I don't think they're gonna. I mean, they may win the first round of the tournament. They they may they may take the whole tournament. I don't know, but I I hope they don't turn into the ascension. But they <laughs> they they are the most likely candidate. Well, to be a fodder for. You they know. have the the, the Vaude villains have something that. That 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 the first NXT call up, well, one of the first NXT call ups, mm-hmm. uh, Adam Rose had. Mm-hmm. He had the character. Mm-hmm. He had. That was it. it and it's a very kid friendly gimmick too. Yeah, it's a, it's a very small crowd, kid friendly, no like half the crowd gets it, gimmick. And and it's it looks better on television as well, mm-hmm. like the whole oh they're black and white on television that's so awesome, but in in real life they're just two dudes going like this the entire time. Yeah. Um, I, I I found it extremely interesting just from the fact that like the Raw for Mania, tons of NXT guys got called up, but mm-hmm. really the only ones we really expected to get called up were Enzo and Cass. Like we didn't expect the Vaude villains, we didn't expect Apollo Crews to get called up. Like, I didn't expect the Baron Corbin to win. Baron Corbin, like, yeah. like while well, everyone, because I think everyone immediately thought, oh, Finn, Joe, Bailey, like yeah. those guys are getting and called up. None of and them. Bailey didn't up. show. Enzo and Cass were the only ones mm-hmm. out of the ones we expected. I'm I'm happy for everybody that went up though. I mean, it's good for them. Yeah. But hey, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things develop in uh, this this wacky world. Hey, Eamon. Is created. Hey, Riz. Do you like pizza? I, you know, Riz, I actually love pizza. Oh, wow. You, you know there's a pizza place near us, right? 
I, I've heard of it. Uh, 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 on a certain street, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what would that street be, Riz? Broadway? So, you, so you're telling me that if I, if I get on a plane... Yes. And I come up to Pittsburgh... Yes. And I'm craving some pizza... Yes. I can get a slice on Broadway? <gasps> That's what it's called, Eamon. Why? <laughs> Why? It's wacky. Wow. Nice, nice segue. SliceOnBroadway.com. Nice of course. Uh, they, are, they are big supporters of this show. Um, uh, I'm going to love this one. For the one person that's in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Riz. Tell us hey, more I can about that. Right. I can get there within an hour and a half. Oh, okay. man. <laughs> okay, Bobby. <laughs> It's well, I, I, I've had their pizza. It's excellent. Yes, the pizza is incredible. It is the you can get if you come to Pittsburgh. It is the best pepperoni p- pizza to have during podcasting. I forget what else Sorg says in Pittsburgh. Nice try. Nice <laughs> uh, I forget where the other ones were. Uh, there's one in uh, Carnegie. There's mm-hmm. one in the new one opening up. Yep. You guys That's tomorrow. Tomorrow. If you're listening to this to, oh, well, if you listen to this tomorrow, on, on Wednesday. No, if you're listening, no, if you're listening to this today. Yes, if you're listening to us today, you go down to the Trump Trump rally or the Pirate game or the Pens game, whatever game you need to go to, it will be on in PNC Park. You go there, have a slice, hang out, high five, watch the game, go home, have a great night, because you had the great pizza of Slice on Broadway. Go home a little later because traffic's going to be a nightmare. Oh, you don't want to beat that, tra- you want to beat that traffic? Beat that traffic. Your- beat that traffic. And you want to do it with pizza in your stomach. Leave early and swing by and grab a slice from Slice on so, Broadway. Thank you. Thank you, Slice on Broadway, for sponsoring uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show and everything else for which I mean it does. You have some great-ass pizza. Some great. Is it the perfect pepperoni <laughs> per- yeah, pizza for Pittsburgh podcast? I want, I want, I want. That's what it was. God Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> I was gonna say I want I want um, them to hold up like have like a banner or whatever in front of their store. Great. Uh, that's just that's just a quote from Riz that said you have some great ass beats. <laughs> and, and then the and then just the ash is the just like a emoji ass. Welcome to Riz's Yelp reviews. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that was a good that was a good segue though. You gotta you gotta admit. That's a great segue. Uh, you know, in another way to segue, uh, we're talking about pizza. Let's also talk about spoilers. Wow. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? That was not a great segue. <laughs> great job. <Andy. laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Bobby. Yes, sir. You wanted to talk about this, and, and um, we, you and I have been up, been in a in a stink. We have been in in a in a. Uh, uh, in, not an uproar, like a, a mild, uh, uproar. a mild roar. <laughs> mild we went, roar. We, we went together, and we we yelled "rabble, rabble" to those who would hear us. And sh- shook but, our but it was silent because it was mild. Yeah. Um. Just but yeah, mild. yeah. Spoilers suck, everybody. Hey, hey, you spoilers, get out of here. <laughs> um. <laughs> look, like this. This all stems from. Lucha Underground Season 3 happened uh, this weekend. They had tapings for it. We're not going to spoil anything, so don't worry. But things happened, and and it got out. The news got out. And then apparently also fake news got out. Yeah, pro- well that that happened like a long time ago. Remember when? Remember when people would post fake SmackDown spoilers? Oh, I hate that. Yes. And. Like all these dirt sheets, wrestling news sites, they would have the fake SmackDown spoilers, and you read it, and you're like, "Oh my god, this is gonna be the best SmackDown ever!" Oh my god, that happened and this happened. Oh my god! And then you watch SmackDown, and you're like, "What the hell? <laughs> this is not what I subscribed to." And like Kane wrestled right back for twenty yeah, minutes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, like spoilers are a big problem on the internet. It, not not just in wrestling, but in in everyday life. You have spoilers for like. Game of Thrones, movies, stuff like that. Walking Dead. I mean, we need to stop spoiling things. Like like our friends at um, Alexander Carr's website, Occupy Pro Wrestling, say, don't let your friends spoil Lucha Underground. Well, and, and, and you mentioned, like, you know... Wait, a friend, yeah, don't let friends spoil Lucha Underground. Obviously, TV and movies, it, it, yeah, it, it occurs as well. 
But there's yeah. something there's something about wrestling that I feel is such a such an issue. Here's the thing: I used to read SmackDown and Impact spoilers when I didn't care about watching any of those shows, and and it wasn't from a fact of like, oh, I want to you know be the first to know what's going to happen. Hey, Amen. Do you still care about Impact? Uh, no, but I have to do a podcast about it. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, but yeah, like, it wasn't from a fact of ever like, oh, I need to be the first person to know about this. It was from, I'm not going to watch these. Like, yeah. I, I will, I do admit, I, I look at the SmackDown spoilers before, like, sometimes. Like, if I want to be surprised, I don't. But if I'm like, uh, let's see if it's worth watching this week. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll look at it. Um, but another thing about spoilers, last night on Facebook, everybody was going nuts because people were posting raw what happened before people actually got a chance to watch it. I mean, if you're live reacting on Twitter and stuff like that, I mean... That's one, that's one thing. I, and if, if, you're, if, if you're not in a position where you can watch wrestling... Stay away from social media, for yeah. one thing. Get off your phone. Get off Get your something phone. Else. You don't need to be on your phone 24-7. But then again, you should stick things in one place so you don't, you know. But that's, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I, that was, I, I, uh, Bobby, I thought that was going a whole different way. Yes. <laughs> stick you things up stick here. things, and then uh, you stopped, and I was like, stick your spoilers up your ass. ass. <laughs> but, uh, um, it, but, yeah. Going also back to... Uh, Lucha Underground. I think, and we've talked to obviously Krista Joseph, as we mentioned before, uh, a lot about you know the the going on to the show and stuff like that. Um, I feel like they've really tried to create, like we said, they've tried to create a new model for wrestling mm -hmm. um, to where it's not the same as every other promotion that's mm -hmm. out there. To where it's you know it's they a come ahead of time. The 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 stuff that was spoiled isn't going to be airing for another year. Yes, yeah. that's exactly. It's exactly. People look, likely will forget about it. Hopefully, maybe they're banking on that. Yeah. Well, and also, I, I side note because it's really not kind of the point of it. But everyone, everyone's not everyone's. But I, I saw a lot of responses like, "Oh, Lucha Underground's jumped the shark," and and we, like, it's like we talked to Krista Joseph about the what you what they put on in the in the actual ring that mm -hmm. fans get to see is a fraction of the show. Yeah. They yes. they don't they don't film their backstage stuff where people can see it. Yeah, that would be that's what we're missing that. out of all this. If they were just shooting a movie scene with like a live audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lucha, Lucha. <laughs> after everything. Uh, but no, it's it's I uh, that pissed me off for one thing because it's like uh, wrestling fans. I feel like are just so to the so, point where it's like it's either got to be one way or the other. All it's, right, I got a, I got a question for you guys. Okay. So we're we're talking about spoilers. Yes. When a company like like NXT does it, when when they when they're taping for for some a show that happens next month or the next month after that, mm -hmm. and and they spoil the one thing that you. That you would be excited for. That's a good point. Like, like the Nakamura thing. Nakamura was that was like what three months before it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Aries, they Aries. Aries. Well, and like, they figure they probably figured James it's Storm get, when he first arrived and I, didn't do anything. Figure, they probably figured it's gonna get out anyway, so he might as well just yeah, put right. it out there. WWE is the biggest spoiler of their own stuff. I remember like years ago when like. Like uh, there would be like a title change on like a SmackDown, they would announce it on yeah. the, before the show aired. Like it worked for Nitro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spoiler Alpha alert: Big Foley's gonna win the title on their show tonight. <laughs> that'll, that'll put butts in the, the seats. Butt, yeah. That'll put butts in the seats. Yeah, that'll put seats in the butts. <laughs> seats in the butts. <laughs> it's going back to what I said previously about sticking things. In there. <laughs> but but still, what is your guys' take on? Companies spoiling their own stuff, not not the other person's stuff, because that thing's that, not the other companies like what WCW yeah. did and what TNA tried to do when they whenever they were in the in that in that same realmish area. Some stuff I like I can understand it from that mentality of WWE wanting to like get a jump on everybody and and you yeah. know, but at the same time I don't know it's 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 but even 
like Lucha Underground's done that somewhat. Like when they were, you know, when they were preparing for the season two premiere, they released like photos of like the Katrina Jerry front Ryan. office and like the fact that they, obviously they didn't go full out and like saying what's happened, but like they released mm-hmm. little stuff. And I saw some people. There were like a few people being like, "Stop spoiling it," like. Mm-hmm. Which I think is interesting, um, and it's also a thing where, what's your line to draw? For sp- actually, that might be a good big question. What's your line to draw for spoilers? This will be our little question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our, our mini, our mini question. Uh, I going to like what you mentioned about like raw and stuff like that. Like I feel like if it's a live show that's being aired live, there's you know. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna be again, get off social media. Like yeah. don't. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, if it's a tape show, I I agree you shouldn't spoil it. I think at least to a, at least without not without like proper warning of what mm-hmm. is going to follow. That's going to be a spoiler. Um, but then again, if they want to hype it so people actually watch it, is that good? You know, is that well, is that acceptable? It d- it depends. I think it depends on what you define as hype and what you define like as say, spoilers. Like say, like say somebody's gonna debut and they want eyes to to see it. Like, can they say mm-hmm. such and such is debuting on on Lucha Underground next season? Tune in and watch. Well, I think they uh, like kind of like they did with Rey Mysterio. Yeah, they did that. They with did Mysterio. that with Rey Mysterio. Yeah. And they it, did that it, with uh, Joey Ryan. Like I was trying to yeah, say before, they yeah. they. Pe- they posted the picture of Joey Ryan with the lollipop, and like they didn't say what he was gonna do. They didn't say he was gonna be, a, you know, the undercover cop or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just one of those things where it's like, oh, Joey Ryan's going to be in Lucha Underground. Yeah. I'm going to tune in to watch. Yeah, and I think again, I think it just all def- depends on what you define as hype and what you define as spoilers. Yeah. Um, I find personally that Roger Raleigh is the only hype I need. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, it, it, like they, um, like um, sometimes Lucha Underground will post like a tweet about like, um, like oh, this match is happening well, on Wednesday night, and and you could argue, well, is that a spoiler? Is that going to spoil my? No, that's just know. a match listing, though. Well, it's yeah, sometimes, but non-spoiler match listings. Yeah, that's just, a, that's just that's just a match listing. Um, yeah, but not. I I just feel like there's some people out there, not me, but like there's some people out there that look at that and go, well, that hampers my viewing of the show. So, so it, let's. Uh, so I don't, agree with I don't that. like that. I don't like that. The compa- uh, those, the, the people you're talking about. <laughs> they're the guys. People, that, those people are stupid. Yeah, those are the guys that go to the to an NXT live show, see that there's a banner saying these. This is the entire match listing, and immediately flip out and go, "What the hell is this shit?" Hmm. Like I want to be surprised. I, I, I didn't want to know if Asuka is going to be here. Oh. She wasn't. I I just there's the weird mentality of that where people are like, oh, I wish I didn't know that because when it actually happened, I would have reacted differently. But mm-hmm. it's like, but it happened for a reason. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a topic that's you know going to be debated a long time. Yeah. Um. But like for NXT and. That stuff happened, and I forgot. I forget it happens. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like with with you know, even with TNA. Sometimes I'm like, did I watch that? Did I read this? Because sometimes they even throw a curveball and do it again. Yeah. Did I read this? Did I read this somewhere? No. I remember the uh, the one Mr. Anderson segment. You guys were like, what? <laughs> did that really happen? And then oh yeah, seemed... huh? 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 <laughs> uh, but no, I Mr. Anderson quit the company. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he, he didn't quit. He didn't seem like he quit. Yeah. Uh, okay. But I, apparently, uh, apparently, allegedly. Um, but no, like uh, I, I find, like, just be careful with spoilers and 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 be conscious of it. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm not going to name names, but there's other podcasts that I've listened to that deal with wrestling that have casually dropped Lucha Underground spoilers, and it's like, fucking. I, is it the ones yeah. we watch or listen to? Oh, you mean you mean yeah. I, I see what you did there. Um, but again, it's not. Yeah, we say Lucha Underground because we have so much invested into the actual storyline. But it's really any take wrestling. Don't spoil it. It's stupid. Yeah. Uh, and and don't 
immediately judge what's written down by another person on paper as what actually is going to, what you're going to think about it, what you're going to see. I see that a lot as well. There's a lot of spo- like some there are some spoilers out there for live event shows that include that per- that person's personal opinion on everything. Yeah. And it's like that's how you viewed it. It may not be how everyone else views it. That's yeah. question. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Right. I got it. Uh, you were going to say sorry. Uh, there was just, that error there. What was that, Bobby? I'd just like to say um no matter how you feel, Bruce Willis is has been dead the whole time. I will fucking kill you, Bobby. <laughs> how how old is that, really? Oh uh, well. Like ten years well, old. Well, Beth is already <laughs> dead, so we're good. Ten years? It's like been ten years since I've been It, it was in two thousand six or something. Yeah. Was it two thousand six? It was two thousand six. No. Yeah. I Haley Joel Osment was a little kid, now he's a fat guy. Six cents, right? Yeah. I'm gonna How look was that 2006? Up. You guys do not end this. Sorg, if you're listening, this stays on. No, the show. no, we're talking. No, we're getting into this. There's no way that it was 2006. Go to IMDb. I'll, I'll go. Okay, oh, yeah, no. we'll do that. On, we'll do that on the break. But before we, before I prove Bobby wrong, uh, you should go visit us at prowrestlingtees.com. Uh, God, uh, there are plenty of. Um, Sorg. This is this is all sorts of fault. Uh, we have plenty of amazing T-shirts designed, some from our good friend Alex Cars, uh, where you can re- wear the Wrestling Mayhem show on your body. Um, uh, a lot of really great stuff over there from not just body, us, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not just us, but all of your favorite pro wrestlers, uh, independents and otherwise, are over there on ProWrestlingTees.com. Some friend of the check them out. Some that have been on this show. Mm-hmm. Friends of. Uh, some that you may have seen on a TV screen near you. Some that you probably have never heard of, but you may think they've got a cool like parody shirt of something. Some might be in jail soon. Well, yeah, allegedly. No, <laughs> no, allegedly. no, no. Uh, no uh, but you can go check us out. <laughs> Very uplifting. ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, go support the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, and, yeah, we are going to take a quick commercial break. I don't know who's going to be on the commercial break. We're going to arrive. Right off into the sunset. And I didn't plan that, but we'll be right back. Bobby, I'm going to shoot that horse. No, don't shoot the horse. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, the studio after, horse. We'll be right back after I shoot the studio horse hey. uh, with the big question. In, in my bulletin board that I have, there used to be this kid uh, called Your Crap's Week. And he invited a, he invited me to, to watch the show. So I started watching it uh, a little bit more and more and more until I got hooked. And, and eventually, you started getting my money. So now I'm totally hooked. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Wrestling Mayhem Show 515. Thank you for checking out that commercial. But we are back to talk more things professional wrestling. And Riz over here has got a big question for us. Thanks, Sorg. Um, so <laughs> called you Sorg too. God damn it! What's your big question? No, you call me Riz. Don't worry. I was about to call you Sorg. Good. Um, so my, the big. So we're still off, coming off the high from you know the entire weekend of WrestleMania, which happened two weeks ago. Um, and I was actually thinking about this for a while, uh, and and like as soon as the Godfather got inducted, like was talking about getting inducted and all that stuff. It made me think, is there a, a mid-card talent right now that's been in there for a while? So it, let's cut that off from people that came in from NXT a lot, like a little bit mm-hmm. ago. And we're not going to talk about the you know the ones who used to be world champions and all that stuff. Um, but is there a mid-card there goes my- her superstar? <laughs> That, that if they retired right now, would go into the Hall of Fame. Hmm. Interesting question. It is. That's why I thought of it. Who yeah, wants to go? Had one until you said world was a world champion. Well, <laughs> not you, a world champion. 
You can if you want to. Bobby, what was your pick? What was your um, pick? My pick would be Alberto Del Rio. Okay. Um, because he is a mid carder right now. Um, going for the U.S. title against John Cena of all people. Um, but he he's been he's been on the upper echelon before. Not not right now. Um, his father was or his uncle, right? Yes, his uncle. Uh, he was he was he was he's he's a, he's a second generation wrestler basically. Not from his father, but from his uncle. I mean, mm. that they like that prestige to go in the Hall of Fame. So that, based on that, uh, I think that we, he's a great worker, um, really good in the ring. Uh, I, I very underrated as far as promos go. Um, I, I just think he's a solid choice. Okay, Damon. That's interesting because I'm actually very puzzled and and have That's trouble thinking one. No, 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 not by the question, but the, the choices that are available. Uh, God, I want to say, you know what? I would probably say Sheamus would probably have a place in the Hall of Fame. Just get the entire league of nations. In. Yeah, just probably just Sheamus. You know, Rusev. Wait, wait, bad news, Barrett. When oh, oh, Barrett's not getting it. There's bad news. no what? way. What? Love him to death, but there's no way he's yeah. getting it. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> yeah, I know he's got plenty. Um, but no, I would say Seamus. I, I think he okay. he was a very. I mean, he's a very recognizable face. I think with WWE, like he's somebody who has been there long enough and has kind of been in the forefront long enough to where he's considered like a. He's very synonymous with WWE. Did Bobby just think of something? I got I got one that wasn't a champion. It was a. And Tina Morella. He wasn't a world champion. Great comedy wrestler. Yeah, I guess um, so. He was, he, he was a former Divas champion, I think, right? No, no, maybe not. Oh, Miss WrestleMania. Miss yeah. WrestleMania, yeah. that's right. Miss that's WrestleMania. Right. Um, and, and, like, he had one of the best moments in WWE, the Milan Miracle. I mean, that was a great debut. So I, I think I, – I'm going to change my answer from – since uh, Derry already have, had a title, I'm going to change it to uh, the Milan Miracle Santino. Plus, he had one of the greatest Royal Rumble moments of all time. Okay. Based on that, all right. that's what I think. Riz, Riz who would you, who would you uh, pick? Actually, the, like I said, I thought about this a while. And one name that keeps popping in my mind over and over again is Goldust. Oh, yes, yeah. 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 Gold Dust is Definitely. probably the easiest one we can name, but but he's been in the business for how long? Mm-hmm. And he's changed his character over and over and over right, and I'm over again. Remember seven. when like he went from the gold Emmy statue mm-hmm. to the artist formerly known as Gold Dust. Freaky. To tagging with, you know, Booker T and developing uh, Tourette's from <laughs> from getting thrown into an electrical, an electrical outlet or electrical box uh, and then now what he's doing with Truth mm-hmm. and he was also was that in, was this in WWE where he, he he came back for a short time as a preacher no, like I think that was, that was uh... Oh no, that was W. No, but that, that was like ninety. That was, was ninety eight. That was that was when um he had dropped the formerly known as Goldust character and was like was all about his Christianity. Oh, he okay. feuded with Val Venus at one point. I don't oh, remember. Yeah, that. I remember that. I'm gonna have to go back and like it. It lasted a whole month, I think. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Goldust has been in there for a long time. Devin was also a So I would... He, and also, he's been in WCW as well. Yep, and, and really kind of spanned the globe. Yes. I, I'd, argue, I'd argue any of the, uh, the two Rhodes brothers could go in. Rhodes boys? The Rhodes, them, them Rhodes boys. Because uh, Cody's the same way. Like Cody, I think, uh, he's, should be... Should be really, you know, applauded for the fact that he's able to work... So, he's been able to work so many different characters. Cody is a wrestling chameleon. Yeah, if he is. A character, he will become that character. 
and, be and, really and good people at being disappear in that character. And that's super commendable. Like I think it's it's very important to embody whatever you're given, whatever that you're given. And actually, the other one else, the other one I was going for was uh, either I mean Gold Dust or Our Truth. Yeah. Like I, I kind yeah. of feel like Our Truth has been in there. Something. He's he's been in the business for longer than I can remember. There was a time I did not like our truth at all, and then he won me over with little Jimmy, and, and then he, all the other stuff with the spiders, over, and, and then he lost you over this past year, right? No, no, not really. I I don't mind our truth. I like our truth. But yeah, those were uh, the, there was another one I I had, but I couldn't figure out who it was. Uh, but. That was a good, like, easy question, I think. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, yeah. We, 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 we strained our brains <laughs> enough with, with our gold that that was an easy... Let's go to the chat room. Aw. Oh, no. Yeah. Whoops. But, hey, we may not have a chat room, but if you're listening to this right now and you have an answer big, to the big question... Right Shut up. Oh. <laughs> if you have an answer to the big question, tweet it at us at Mayhem Show with uh, the hashtag big question. Uh, the question, as Riz put it, uh, what mid-card level talent could go into the Hall of Fame if they retire today? Uh, that's a long-winded way to put that, but whatever. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, give us an answer. Uh, tweet it to us, at Mayhem Show. We may read it uh, next week on the show. Um, but yeah, I, let's, let's dive into a few couple more things before... I, I actually have a few things I kind of want to discuss with you guys before we go off the air. Uh, that I realized. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to force you to talk about it, but uh, uh, I, I just realized there is some TNA news. Wah, wah. I know. I... <laughs> I know, I know. Here's the thing. Uh, apparently, the reports are that uh, TNA is moving their headquarters, uh, uh, and by moving their headquarters, I mean they're taking all their headquarters and moving it to their shipping warehouse. <laughs> So they're going to move their one cubicle and move it into a bigger cubicle with Dixie's, no windows. Dixie Carter is just going to have her desk like sat in the middle of like, like, t-shirts and like, uh, uh, and and breakaway guitars. Do you remember that episode of The Simpsons when Bart bought a factory for like a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> I picture Dixie Carter buying a factory for a dollar, moving it in, and then uh, somebody. Maybe maybe the, let's say Rockstar Spud being on on the Wacky Shack stairs, and then the whole thing just cl- is falling in. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, um, DNA in a nutshell. DN, DNA, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think this kind of interesting. I mean, just sell already. Yeah, we they talked a lot about we talked a lot about TNA. Take the highest bidder and get possible the demise. It feels like every month there's like a oh TNA will probably die now and they don't really, but it's getting close. They've also canceled all their replays on Pop. Uh, not on Saturdays. Uh, no, oh, no, huh? the, no. They they've said that the uh, this is the only chance you get. The only ch- live is the only chance that you get to watch it. Oh man, I can't wait. Oh no, I gotta do something. <laughs> Which for a channel, which for a channel like Pop, uh, uh, the only thing with Pop show, has with a show called Shit's Creek. Yeah, the only thing Pop has is um, when Big Brother's on, they have Big Brother After Dark. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, that's the only thing I watch that channel for. I think they show like soap operas during the day, <laughs> like, and old Survivor episodes. Well. CNA's in good company. It used um, to be the TV Guide channel. It is. It used to be the TV Guide channel. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, I guess that's really all the TNA news. Uh, no, that, there was. Uh, you know what? Let's, I, I, let's just get into it. There's a certain thing that I know we've all seen here that came out today. <laughs> let's just talk about it. Why not? So, so I don't even know where the... This was at like what city this was in, but uh, apparently there was, I think it's like Georgia somewhere. Somewhere in Georgia, probably Georgia. Georgia would make sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, where there was some, I guess, robber, not robbery, but someone trying to murder somebody or something, like like your regular traditional, like oh, people being crazy news story. Uh, <laughs> you are correct. Uh, but we got an eyewitness apparently who who uh, the that news organization interviewed. 
uh, uh, about what happened. That just happened to be, oh, a former WCW world champion. Huh? Ah. <laughs> Mr. Scott Steiner. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Again, it's something anything. It's actually the more calm interview that Scott Steiner's ever given. Yeah. But like, that's Scott Steiner. Yeah. I, I picture him just saying, you know, I saw you. You have about a thirty-three point five percent chance of being guilty, <laughs> and then Kurt Angle saw you. On top of that, you have about a five more percent chance of being guilty. I mean. <laughs> like, just, so, oh my god and this is actually the first time I'm watching this by the way so. oh no is it really he looks like he he looks normal he looks like a, a normal dad he does but you, you know deep down in his mind he's calling this guy a fat ass in his mind <laughs> yeah. calling saying that probably wanting to beat the interviewer interview up with a lead pipe uh, jump like, on a pogo stick. Yes, w- try wonder, to jump on a pogo stick, fail, fall on his butt, and say he is the he is the world heavyweight championship. I wonder if he if he if he hollered when he saw the guy commit the crime. If he didn't hear. Heard, no, no, if no. anybody heard him. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Well, actually, I mean, here's an here's an honestly good talking point from this. Like, I thought it because for those that didn't see it. They don't mention his name. They don't no, show no. his name at all. They just well, say they, they do put Scott Steiner on the the, they, the graphic. Well, it, but they only say that he's a guy who owns a restaurant in the parties where this happened. <laughs> and I find it very. I will say, there's a part of me that was very satisfied by that. Because well, I don't think anybody wants to know that he's also Scott Steiner, the professional wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, well, that, but also. The mentality, I think, um, for a lot of people who wrestled in the era that Steiner was really popular in was that they were all stars, and I think people think, like, oh, the people today aren't stars anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there's a, a very few handful of actual like stars. But for someone like somebody who was at the top of WCW at one point and who was a very recognizable professional wrestler to not even be recognized, yeah. I think it's kind of interesting. Well, you know what? He didn't have his headdress on. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> and you you can't really tell that he's there because that could that could be his twin brother. You don't know that because you can't see the the weird uh, phallic knife that goes through his chest. What you, what you don't see in the interview is he's actually on top of Rick. <laughs> and Rick's just barking. <laughs> yeah, Rick's just barking underneath. <laughs> Oh, and can I just say, like can off I just, in the corner. Can I just say my favorite video of Scott Steiner <laughs> on the internet is Let's just not, our favorite Scott has Steiner nothing memories. to do with wrestling. Wait, time out, time out. What? I'm gonna let you finish, but uh, Eamon. I'll let you finish. The, that that kind of broke me because when you said he's just off into the corner, I picture him in the car, like. His head poking <laughs> out of the window, barking at the reporter <laughs> as, as Scott's talking. Is he like, okay? Like, oh, why would you? Why would you do that? And somebody comes over and tries to break the glass. <laughs> it's Goldberg, and he just stand again. <laughs> he just rips his vein or whatever the hell happens. Um. Anyways, but my favorite video of Scott Steiner has nothing to do on the internet. My favorite video has nothing to do with wrestling. It's him. Tearing down a Shoney's restaurant in a backhoe. <laughs> yes. Oh, I think it was where, assumingly, that's where it was, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. He bought the Sony, the Shoney's franchise. No, it was a Hardee's. What, what, what? Well, no, owned. I thought I saw a Shoney's like logo, or whatever, in like the background. It was a Shoney. Okay, it might have been. It might. He might own them like side by side or something. It's, but they it's, said it's, it was a Hardee's. Where is, it, where is it? Shoney's is a restaurant chain. Yeah, Shoney's is. Uh, they have food. Ooh. And they also have claw machines where you can win fabulous prizes. <laughs> my Bob, friend, Bob, my friend, true Bob. story, my friend drove the whole way down to Shoney's in, like, West Virginia to get these president, like, stuffed animals. <laughs> wow. I love Bobby's yeah. definition of fabulous prizes. Fabulous prizes, yes. <laughs> yeah. True story. Jesus. True story. Um, you know what, actually... You know what, actually... You know what, Riz, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Because we, I found a perfect transition from the last story. 
<laughs> and I'm going to capitalize on it. Oh, no. Because we, we're going to talk about this since we brought up Scott Steiner. Because you watched the show recently. There's no place that we can actually like, review the whole show. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know what? Uh, Riz, tell, it right here. Riz tell us your adventure this week and why it made you really sad. Uh, I watched Greed. WWE watch Greed. Greed. And like this was from uh from you know Mad Mike's uh list of shows that we should watch. And now I see why because after that was over, I just sat in front of the uh that preview screen where it says you finished Greed <laughs> and I wanted to poke my eyes out with my thumbs. Oh. Just pop them out of my skull. So I know my favorite thing is that I wish there was an alternate universe where WCW didn't get bought out for at least another year so they could have continued with their whole uh, uh, Seven Deadly Sins themed pay-per-views that they were doing. Like Gluttony is one of them. I can't wait for WCW Sloth. <laughs> and it's just main events just Queewee. Yeah, so, like, so, so he's not facing anybody. He's just Queewee. We, we have some breaking news. What oh. about um, Shinsuke Nakamura started a Snapchat. Yes. Oh, no. Um, yes. Here, here is his timeline on Twitter. I just started Snapchat, but I don't know how, but I don't know how still. It's one oh. hour. Uh, one hour later, Snapchat, Shinsuke Nakamura, all one word. Four minutes after that, I gave up Snapchat, Snap today. No. <laughs> So that was your breaking news for the night on Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> I wonder if he had any of the, like any snaps. Uh, I love it. But uh, uh, any 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 standouts from from the stuff you saw on, on uh, WCW Grade? How'd you like that cruiserweight tag team title match? Actually, that was that was pretty good. I mean, that's the only thing I remember that happened. Yeah, on that show. like uh, I know. Kiwi had a match that was unprecedented for some reason. <laughs> Inside Ikea? No, no. Oh, okay, he's different. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. Um, I saw Hakushi was still there. Bless you. What? Wait, was it Hakushi? Bless you. No, Hakushi. Hakushi's the one with the full body tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, the angel. I thought he was in there somewhere. What? I could be wrong. I probably am. Are you? Did you take a lot of drugs while watching? I, yes, because I made I made sure I watched Greed. Um. Ah, uh, there was. Hakushi was. I, the I know. I know there was like, the tag match was a squash. Oh yeah, with Luger and Bagwell. Yeah, Luger and Bagwell. Bagwell almost dying in the middle of the ring. Like, like they they actually. It was the weird moment where there was technical problems. I guess there was technical problems during the entire mat, the entire night, and WWE at the network actually tried to fix it as much as possible. <laughs> like they they cut a lot of stuff, and then they they cut out of one promo, and you see that they, they're they're still in the ring, and they're going, uh oh, why are they still in the ring? Like the the announcers just blurted out, "Uh oh, they're in, they're in the ring," uh, and Bagwell hasn't moved yet, and they're like, "Oh shit, we should say like we should say something. We should say something that's different." And then like, uh, they're, they're still feeling the effects from that match. Uh, oh, and he's up, good. Um, <laughs> well, he's not dead. But yeah, there is. It was magnificent. Oh, oh, oh! How can, how can I forget this tag match? Uh, it was the Rhodes brothers. Uh, the, not the Rhodes brothers. Yes. Well, it was the Rhodes family. Dusty. It's Dusty and Dustin uh, teaming up to face Ric Flair. And you know what, Bobby? Do you know who was the uh, Ric Flair's partner on that one? David Flair. Wrong. It was oh. Jeff Jarrett. What? Old <laughs> slap nuts himself. Old slap nuts. Pay, buy my gold shit. Ain't that great? Pon, Ponzi scheme. Jeff Jarrett himself. Oh, I, I, we we should talk about that, but we'll yeah. Let's talk about 
Is he the Jeff Jarrett the scam artist? Yes. What is GSW a Ponzi scheme? J uh, Global Force Wrestling Gold, yeah. Bobby. Uh-oh. You can buy some gold, and then Uh-oh. sell that gold, and then buy some more gold, and then sell some more gold. Because it all has to do with wrestling somehow. Yeah. I have, I I is this an app? <laughs> it's just like a, online. The Global yes. Force app. The Global Force app. Where they just make you buy gold and oh wait that's Avengers lines. But oh. yeah, uh, during the entire ma- the, the the entire match, I'm like, Jeff Jarrett's a piece of shit. <laughs> like, the entire match, I'm like, Jeff Jarrett's a piece of shit. You just figure that out now. And 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 the pre oh I should have told you about the pregame. I should have told you about the pre-match uh, it, uh, the 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 GTV style. Uh, Camera work done for the uh, before that uh, that tag match because breaking news Dusty Rhodes had had a, a whole bunch of uh, burritos oh, I believe forty I think that's what they were they were claiming and he was saving it up for Jeff Jarrett or Ric Flair because it was a kiss my ass match oh yeah 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 because the stipulation was the loser had to kiss the other's ass but and then, and- but I don't know if you saw the next week on Nitro, where no. literally they just brought out a donkey with, like, it spray-painted Dusty's ass on the ass of the donkey. Jeez. And then they just shoved Rick and Jeff's face into it. Oh. But, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's greed in a nutshell. Uh, I just, I, I saw a legend, a legend's butt. Yeah, and it was, it was, but it was, but that show was, but uh, why'd you make me bring that up, Eamon? Because we were talking about Scott Steiner, and I thought it'd be the easiest transition. But hey, um, fuck. Uh, is there anything we haven't talked about that we feel we should talk about? Uh, I think we covered a lot. Is that Jeff Jarrett's a piece of shit? No, Jeff Jarrett's a piece of shit. Spoiler alert, he's a piece that's of shit. What I, that's one of the things I learned, Eamon. Riz, what's the other thing that you learned this week? I I actually learned another thing from the network, though. Uh, Are we doing what we learned from wrestling this week, though? Yeah. Well, ladies ladies and gentlemen, what have you learned from wrestling this week? Ladies and gentlemen. When, and Riz, because I said your name before. And, uh, I, I learned that the WWE Network... Doesn't censor itself, and that's awesome. Yeah, there'd just be random shows where you just get fuck bombs. And yeah, we get bomb. oh, ECW pay per views, like old ECW pay per views, like uh, Joel by God Gertner <laughs> pay per views, epic, epic stuff. So yeah, that's what I learned. Awesome. Bobby of J-Town, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned two things this week. Um, number one, I learned that The Miz is becoming one of my favorite wrestlers once again uh, with his feud with Zack Ryder all the way up to this new feud with Cesaro. It's And, and him and Maurice, it's just perfect. No, it's, domestic! It's perfect. Like the domestic water. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. It's domestic. And the blue M&M's. I mean, it's perfect, and like he he when he cut like he redid his promo. Jesus, like I mean, it's it's he's perfect. It's perfect, the perfect character for him right now, especially now that Maurice is involved. Um, the other thing I learned, um, Riz will appreciate this. I am not going to get. Try, I'm going to try not to guess what happens in wrestling anymore. Thank you. I, I learned just to sit back. Enjoy the ride because the last two Monday nights have been so much fun, and I I like the direction they're going in. I'm not gonna try to guess what happens. Ooh. So that's what I learned. What what you what you win, Riz? Um, what you win over there? We kind of have uh breaking news. Okay. Uh, actually, from it's from indie scene, so I don't know if not you guys know. Not Snapchat back. Uh, so, you guys know Josh Josh Alexander, right? 
Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah. The walking the uh, walking re- weapon. He had neck surgery and he had neck surgery to, to repair you know his neck with with plates and screws and and he couldn't move at all. Uh, so I I believe. Let me see if I can see this here. Uh, wait a minute. I believe he's back wrestling. I believe he is back wrestling. In yeah, because he, res- he he had a wrestling show in Canada this past weekend. Yes. And that, that's really good news because uh, I've been following, you know, Ethan Page and and Josh Alexander nonstop since I followed, you know, Ethan Page. Uh, he Did he work? Of- Did Josh ever work on WC? No, no, no. Just yeah. Ethan. Oh, just, okay. just all ego. That's it. Um, man, that was, that's great news coming from that from his camp. And yeah, definitely. I can't wait to see the headgear back. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Hey, uh, from from the chat. From oh. the chat room. We oh, wait, got wait, we got wait. one from Sorg. Sorg <laughs> says, "I learned not to underestimate the fandom of Tatanka." Uh, the response of his fans and wrestlers in Meadville was amazing. And Wait, he, the... I, he needs to watch more Clash Champions because they are the most random thing on WWE Network. Wait, where and is the chat room? In the chat room where it's always been. Sorg is broadcasting us to the internet right now. How is he doing that? I have no idea. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, Sorg. Sorg, Sorg, Sorg you the internet sly, genius that he is. sly piece of shit. Eamon. <laughs> Riz. <laughs> What did you learn fresh in wrestling? You know, I learned in wrestling this week that uh, it's, it's going to be okay, guys. You know, we've got you know, all, all the work that's been put in. Great know. job, everybody. Uh, Great job. Uh, you know, no, no, no. Try, trying to, you know, earn more time in the ring and stuff like that. Trying to gain more more developed storylines for them. You know, allowing women, you know, a platform to where they can main event and, and, and giving them a chance to really kind of showcase their abilities and, and being based around wrestling. It's all okay. We finally reached the point where we can have proper women's wrestling. The revolution is over. Doctor Phil says they're doing great. <laughs> yes. And then he wooed like Marty the Moth and ran off. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, guys. Doctor Phil approves. Doctor Phil, good. Huh? I don't know which one was more approved worthy. The uh, the, the Doctor Phil approving of the women's match or uh, Shane McMahon approving uh, AJ Styles and uh, Sami Zayn. I love that Shane McMahon turning into every indie mark. Like, uh, right. Great uh, job, guys. You did a great job. Keep it up. You're going to do great. Don't worry about it. You're going to be... Like, he, he was a uh, uh, fucking do-it guy. I forget what his name was already. Shia LaBeouf? Yes. Shia LaBeouf. He's, Shia, he's the Shia LaBeouf of professional wrestling. Um, uh, another one from the chat room, uh, Matt. Guest Matt, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's mainstream Matt, learned uh, that a less than perfect spinner only haunts Booker T for at least a day. <laughs> so he must have not hit his spinner Rooney that great. Oh, no. Booker T. Now can you dig that, sucker? You know what I can dig, Bobby? What? Everyone listening to this show. Horses? Hi. Going to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Checking us out over there, all the stuff that we're doing. Over I mean, we didn't even think there was a chat room, and there's a chat room. Bobby, who's in the chat, chat room? room. Uh, we want to thank the chat room. Uh, we got uh, Sorgatron in the chat room. Who's that? Antonio Garza is in the chat room. Juggalo John, Matt, Mainstream Matt, and Wheels. Thank you guys for uh, tuning you. in to our little fledgling program here. We're so, and we're sorry. We went rogue this week. <laughs> we, we went fully rogue, and I hope we did it justice. But if, if you want to tell us how we haven't done this show justice, uh, you can leave us a voicemail at 412-206-WMS0 or send us an email to Good Times. Good Times. Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, once again, big thank you to Basic Your Sickness for the intro, outro music. Uh, or, uh, or they can send us a letter by the Pony Express. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, uh, get it. It's a horse. Um, uh, Follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show, where you can see all of our live tweeting, all the stuff that we are doing all throughout the week. And you can also tweet us on there uh, as your answer to the big question. Uh, follow us on Facebook at Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, and the Facebook group, uh, where we'll be posting stuff all throughout the week. Uh, subscribe to us, rate us, uh, leave nice comments, 
Or not nice comments. Tell us what you think. No, no, leave us pretty comments telling how awesome we are. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> it's better when you're a kid. And if you don't know what that means, go back to gold and listen. Definitely. If that's gold this week. We don't know. No, that is going to be gold. So I sword. I, you better make gold. Uh, but no, uh, yeah. Uh, for myself, uh, at Amy to please, for Riz, who you can find uh, over at Riz Plays Games. Uh, Riz, what you doing over on Riz Plays Games? I actually just post. I actually posted a uh, YouTube video on Riz Plays Games of MLB 16, the show where we meet Big Daddy Bobo. I had a teddy bear named Bobo when I was a kid. <laughs> Thinking of uh, Bobby's teddy, teddy bear. bear. Bobby, we're going to get people find you on the internet. You can find me at BobbyFJTown. Uh, insert coin to begin.com. New uh, boss battles and articles going up. Oh, actually, uh, I can. Uh, and, you, and, we have and, a boss battle to post that we haven't gotten to yet. Yes, and I also posted a, uh, a nice little article yeah. on uh, insert coin to begin.com, too. Go ahead, Bobby. Okay. Yeah, but that, that's where you can find me. Those places, and um, generally at work. Okay. Amen. <laughs> stock, stock, Bobby at his job. In, in my home, in my bed at night, sleeping. Hey, Amen. Hey, Riz. Where can they find you? Uh, well, well, they can go check me out on Twitter. This is very NPR-ish, right? I don't know if you can actually. My microphone isn't. Clear. You can find me on Twitter hey, if you please, and you can also uh, check out the wrestling organization I'm involved with. Yes, I'm in the business, kinda, sorta. Not really. Kind of are. Yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, you are paid. personal friends with Johnny Mundo. What? Sure, let's go you with that. You do yoga yeah, with Johnny Mundo. Not really. No. Um, <laughs> parkour. None of us uh, but, are doing yoga with anybody. Let's just be but real you know about you that can, one. But where is that place? It's Inspired Pro Wrestling. You can check it out at inspiredprowrestling.com. Uh, and get more information on the stuff happening in the Austin, Texas wrestling scene. Uh, so for myself... For Riz, for Bobby FJ Town, for for Sorgatron who's still being locked away, uh, in, in in wherever he is, on Tanza's room, <laughs> in, in Tanza's game. Uh, for everyone listening, that has been Wrestling Mayhem Show 515. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.